This is laziness, if I can say. More especially because this same problem was in the June examination. But anyway, let's see what is happening. So we have a pulley system with a mass piece operated by an electric model. It is used to lift a load of 120 kgs. Look at this. The load is said to be 120 kgs, and on the diagram, it is 125 kgs. Do you see what I'm talking about? Okay, cool. Vertically upwards at a constant speed, as shown in the diagram below. So they are moving at a constant speed. The load covers a distance of 6.8 meters in 0.01 seconds. Neglect all effects of friction. The first question, 5.1, defining in words the term power as applied in physics. That is the rate at which work is done. Power is the rate at which work is done. Let's, let's move to 5.2. Calculate the work done by the gravitational force on the load. So what am I supposed to use now? Am I supposed to use 125? Am I supposed to use 120? It's just a mess. Okay, fine. The work done by gravitational force is equal to the force by gravity multiplied by delta y cos of theta. So let's go ahead and substitute. Fg is equal to the mass. Let's take 125. Multiplied by the gravity, which is 9,8 delta y, it is it covers a distance of 6.8 meters. So we have 6.8 multiplied by cos of theta. Well, gravity is acting downwards, obviously, but the load is moving upwards. So we have an angle of 180 degrees. If you put that on your calculator, you're going to get... Minus 8,330 joules as the work done by the gravitational force on the load. And now, 5.3. Determine the average power output required by the electric motor to lift the load through 6.8 meters in 0 0.01 seconds. So the key takeaway here is the fact that they are moving at a constant velocity. So we can set up our equation in the following ways. Work net is equal to change in EK. If it is constant velocity, then change in EK is obviously going to be equal to zero. But let's look at the forces that are acting on this system. We have the work done by gravitational force on the load. And we have the work done by the motor. The mass piece is doing positive work. It is going down. And there's, and there's gravitational force on it that is also going down. So the work there is positive. We can set up our equation in the following way. The work done by the motor plus the work done by the mass piece plus the work done by Fg on the load is equal to zero. We want the work done by the motor. We have the work done by Fg on the load we just need to find the work done by the mass piece let's find the work done by the mass piece separately the work done by the mass piece will be equals to f which is gravitational 100 multiplied by 9.8 the distance covered 6.8 and the cost of zero we've already determined that the mass piece is doing positive work we're gonna get 6,664 joules. Now, if we substitute back in our equation, uh, the work done by the motor plus 6,664 minus 8,330 is equal to zero. So the work done by the motor is equal to 8,330 minus 6,664. Four, you're gonna get 1,666 joules. This is the work done by the motor. But we're looking for the power. The power is the rate at which work is done. So we're just going to have 1,666 divided by the time, 0 0.01. We're gonna have 166,600 watts.